All right, maybe at the end of this talk, I'll dramatically uh, merge a pull request to stabilize flakes. But, uh, <laughs> Maybe we can leave it up to the audience. But that, that's not the subject of this talk. This is about uh, another new feature in Flakes. Uh, that I've, uh, this is really bleeding edge. Uh, this is something I've worked on over the last month and a half or so, uh, called Flake Schemas. And what it uh, strives to do is to solve this problem, uh, which you may have noticed if you uh, uh, run Nick's Flake show on something like Nick's packages. Uh, uh, it's supposed to show you the contents of, of that Flake, uh, which it does. Uh, it will show you there are packages and legacy packages and, and Nixos modules. And then it will say lib unknown, which isn't very nice. Uh, you would like it to actually uh, show what uh, uh, library functions are in this Flake. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're using something like Home Manager, hey, you might have a Home Manager configurations flake or Home Manager modules, and uh, yeah, Nick's Flake Show doesn't know anything about them, so you're you're out of luck, which uh, which kind of sucks. So uh, uh, flake schemas are supposed to uh, solve that problem. So well, I'm way behind time, so maybe I should speed run through the flake refresher. Uh, for the people who don't know Flakes, uh, but they're, uh, they're basically a package manager for your package manager. They're, they're sort of cargo for Nix or NPM for Nix, so they're a way to package Nix expressions. Um, so a Flake is just a Git repo with a flake.nix file in it. Uh, flakes can have dependencies on other Flakes. Uh, they can be locked, uh, so and ensuring reproducibility. Um, and uh, flakes can have uh, arbitrary so-called outputs. So those are the things provided by the flake. So that can be packages or NixOS modules or CI jobs or development shells. Uh, the flake file format doesn't specify any flake outputs. Uh, so uh, the stuff like packages or NixOS modules, that's not part of the flake spec. Uh, so the outputs is just an arbitrary set of, uh, uh, or an attribute set of, of, of values. Um, so, maybe reflect a bit on the Flake goals. So, they're supposed to uh, ensure reproducibility. So, if two people uh, uh, clone uh, a, a Flake Git repo and they evaluate it or build it, they should get the same result out of it. So, there shouldn't be any uh, things like environment variables or configuration flags uh, affecting uh, the outcome. Uh, so, that works pretty well. Uh, they should be composable. Well, that's the dependency mechanism. That works pretty well. Uh, they should be extensible. Well, uh, I'll come back to that. Um, they should be discoverable. Well, I'll also come back to that. Uh, and they should be. Uh, they should just work. Uh, so you have, if you clone a repo, you should be able to do Nix build or Nix develop without configuring anything. Uh, and uh, that also just works because uh, there is no way to configure flakes. Uh, so they either work or they don't. Uh, and I'll also come back to the configurable aspect. Okay, so flake extensibility. So yeah, there, in principle, the flake file format, like I said, it doesn't say anything about uh, output types. Huh? They're arbitrary Nix values. Uh, so they're super extensible. You can just, uh, if you uh, invent something uh, new, uh, so uh, home manager modules or configurations, you can just add them to your Flake. Uh, but the problem is, of course, that the tools don't know anything about it. Uh, uh, so the semantics uh, of Flake outputs are defined by the tools that operate on them. So for example, uh, Nix develop knows about the dev shells attribute. Uh, and uh, what that should mean and uh, how that should behave. Um, so that, that's all totally fine. Huh? And, uh, uh, but the problem is that doesn't work for generic commands like Nix Flake Show because those need to do something sensible for uh, even the Flake outputs that uh, they don't know about. Um, so the result is that uh, uh, yeah, some output types are more equal than others. So for example, this is a, a bit of the C++ code in Nix. Uh, I think this is Nix Flake show. Uh, and so there is a lot of uh, yeah, hard-coded support for specific output types like packages or Hydra jobs. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, it's a very unequal situation. Uh, if you can get Nix, uh, your, your uh, favorite output type merged into Nix, then you're happy and uh, otherwise you're out of luck. 
So that's not very nice. So the, the sort of tools that are affected by that are, are all the generic tools that need to do something sensible for all outputs. Uh, so Nixflake show, it should be able to show any output type. Nixflake check uh, is supposed to be able to verify that your flake is okay. Um, so it should be able to check any kind of flake output. Uh, Nick search, uh, but also documentation generation like search.nixos.org or actually what was sort of our motivating example as uh, so we were developing Flake Hub. Uh, so you can upload your flakes there, but you also want to be able to see what's in them. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we want people to have the ability to support their own output types. We don't want to hard code support uh, for specific output types. Okay, so now to the solution. So that's flake schemas. So a flake schema is uh, something that allows you to define your own output types. So to teach Nix via an, a bit of Nix code um, what is in those outputs and um, uh, how to check them, uh, how to get their contents, uh, and so on. Uh, so a schema for an, an output X, like uh, I know Nix OS modules, uh, you define that by having a another flake output attribute named schemas.x, so schemas.nixos modules, for instance. Um, and a schema is just a Nix expression that uh, returns some information about that uh, flake output. So that could be uh, documentation. Uh, most importantly, it contains a function that enumerates the contents of that flake output. And that enumeration contains documentation about each output attribute, uh, like uh, package descriptions, or, uh, uh, but, but also stuff like uh, checks, so uh, uh, functions that uh, verify that that uh, output is correct via whatever criterion for correctness uh, uh, you have. So there were a couple of design constraints on this. Uh, so. The main one being it's, it should be unintrusive and minimal. This should be something very easy to add. Uh, so it's, and it cannot require changing uh, existing flake output types. So uh, it, it's, yeah, it's supposed to be something that we can just add to existing flakes. Um, and they're not a type system. So uh, they're just an interface between Nix and flake output types. So for example, Nix OS modules have their own type system. Uh, and so flake schemas don't try to replace that. Rather, uh, they just uh, allow Nix to uh, have sort of evaluate a bit of bridge code that uh, uses the NixOS module system to check whether uh, a flake output is correct. So let's just look at an example. Uh, suppose that uh, we want to have a uh, we want to uh, yeah. Uh, so this is a schema for NixOS configuration. Uh, so Nixflake check and Nixflake show have built-in support for that, so we want to rip that out. Uh, so this is the bit of code that we need to write for that. Uh, so a schema uh, just has a version to be future-proof. Uh, it has a markdown documentation. Uh, and the most important thing is it has this, uh, this inventory, which uh, given the output, uh, returns an enumeration of the contents, so that's the, the children. So in, in this case, those are all the uh, machines under your NixOS configuration output. Uh, there is a little human readable string here that doesn't have any semantics. It's just for tools like Nixflake show to briefly describe, oh, oh, briefly describe the output. And then there is an attribute derivation that re is supposed to return the principal derivation for, for that item. Uh, so that doesn't have to exist. Eh? There are stuff like, uh, I know, lib or overlays uh, that, that don't have a derivation. But if there is a derivation, you should return it because then Nixflake check can uh, verify that that thing uh, evaluates and maybe even build it. So here's a slightly more complicated one. So back to the original slide, uh, the, the lib example. Uh, so lib in Nix packages is a nested attribute set of functions. <laughs> Scary. Uh, so it's a nested attribute set of uh, values, uh, like lib.lists.concat lists or whatever. Um, 
yeah, uh, so that's uh, so here the inventory. Uh, what it does is it just recurses to that through that. So until it reaches leaf nodes, there are functions, and then should I use it? Testing. Oh wow. Uh, so then it just returns, okay, this is a library function, but also it has an evaluation check. So uh, here we're, uh, we want to impose some policy, namely that all library functions should use camel case. Well, it's just arbitrary, but I mean, so the, the thing is your schema can do whatever it wants. So uh, here we've made this decision and uh, this teaches Nick's flake check uh, to enforce that. Uh, so now if I knew Nick's flake check, uh, finally uh, we, uh, we get it to show what's uh, inside lib. All right, and, and this is what Nick's flake check will now do. Uh, so if I uh, add a, a, f a function that doesn't uh, obey this camel case check, then uh, Nick's flake check will complain about it. Um, Important thing, uh, so obviously you don't want to create all these schemes your schemas yourself, so uh, I made a repository called Flake Schemas that provides schemas for uh, the most commonly used output types. Uh, in part that's a temporary thing because some of these schemas should be moved to more appropriate places, so for example the schema for NixOS configurations uh, should probably live in the Nix packages repo because uh, there it can actually check that a NixOS configuration, uh, uh, well, no, sorry, I mean that, that is simply the most appropriate place to have that. Um, but yeah, so uh, most of the time you don't uh, define schemas yourself, you just import them from other repos and you say schemas is flake schemas dot schemas and that's all you need to do. Uh, so I made a PR that adds support for this to Nix, and uh, I mean this is uh, my favorite type of PR. It, it rips out a lot of code, so uh, it removes everything uh, that implements uh, handling for specific Flake output types from Nix Flake Show and Nix Flake Check. So there's only the generic code that uh, calls the Flake schema to extract that information. Um, one thing to mention is uh, for backwards comp compatibility, if you don't have a schema in your flake, then uh, it will fetch the flake schema's flake as a fallback. Um, hmm, we're way over time. Well, still do the uh, vaporware part of my talk, which is uh, flake configurability. This is, of course, one of the uh, big uh, problems that people have with flakes, uh, you really want to be able to, on the command line, overwrite things about your flake. Uh, uh, currently you cannot do that, there is no dash dash arc uh, for flakes, or well, there is, it's just ignored. Um, and the reason for this is that uh, we want configuration options to be discoverable. And that has to do with this goal of having flakes working out of the box. You never want to have a situation where somebody has to clone a, a repo and then read the readme to figure out what magic command line arguments they have to pass to get Nix develop or Nix build to work. Um, so that's, that's the reasoning behind it. Uh, and everything needs to be discoverable. So if there are options, there should be a way to have Nix Flake show, show those options. Uh, now schemas, uh, we can also extend them to return this kind of meta information. So the, the, this inventory function can also return this. Uh, so this is what this would look like if it actually existed, which it doesn't. Uh, so I implemented something similar last year, but outside of the context of uh, uh, flake schemas. But the idea is you would have a command like uh, nix describe, uh, you pass it a flake output attribute and it would tell you what it is, but also what sort of options it has, like uh, networking.hostname and it says type string and value bob and the markdown description. Uh, and then uh, you could do a nix build and override that. So you could say dash dash arc string, uh, networking.hostname, uh, something else. Um, and it would only accept option values or option names uh, and uh, that are uh, explicitly declared by that uh, flake schema. So it, it has to exist, it has to be returned in that enumeration of options. 
um, otherwise you'll get an error message. So uh, you can never just have uh, a arbitrary uh, adder set uh, as arguments to your, uh, um, uh, to your uh, flake or your flake output. At least that's, that's the idea. I mean, so this is very risky because it does allow, I mean, you could just define a schema that uh, just allows uh, passing arbitrary values in. Uh, so it, it does potentially open the door for uh, the, the bad sort of configuration uh, where you've, yeah, you first have to uh, read the readme and do a lot of local uh, setup. Uh, so whether this is a good idea is, a, is an open question. Uh, so we'll have to think about it. Uh, yeah, so that was my talk. Uh, so Flake schemas, uh, they finally allow us to rip out all the uh, output specific code from Nix and other tools. Um, and uh, they make all output types first class citizens that are treated the same way. And uh, maybe they can enable configurability. So they would solve two big Flake issues uh, with one stone. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions? There's one over there. I saw that one first, and I'll come there. And over there. Hello? Ah. You said that the, if there isn't a flakes um, or like a schema's output, it will fall back and fetch the flake schema's flake, right? Yeah. Which GitHub organization is it under? It's currently under determinate systems, but uh, this should be moved to NixOS if this gets all right. accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. Okay. I was somewhere to the right. Who had his hand up? There. Yeah. No one ever mind that. Ah. Okay. Who, who else had a question? On the upper side of the stage, of course, making me walk. Could you pass it, maybe? <laughs> Thank you. Um, you had the um, the example with the with the options for flex schemas, and you had like uh, the type of the option was of type string. But um, do you support? Uh, how do you think to support other types of um, options? Can you repeat that last part? Uh, there was some noise. Uh. Uh, how do you uh, plan to support other type of options than string? Because obviously on the command line you can pass a uh, string, but you could like pass an address set or something like that, or a list. Yeah. And then you would have to like internally parse that into an yeah. language. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you know, this is the vaporware alert thing. Um, so it, it's easy to support types uh, like uh, string and bool and whatever. Uh, but of course, you have a lot of configuration options like environment.system packages, uh, where it's not really obvious how you would uh, uh, pass those on the comment line uh, in a way that uh, we can check that those are valid. But uh, or, or, or in fact, that the values that you pass, they need to be in scope of that expression, because I want to say something like pkgs.firefox. Uh, uh, but, but there is no pkgs in the scope of the comment line uh, arguments. So uh, I don't know how to solve that. I uh, have to think about it. But uh, yeah, m maybe that is a case of uh, we don't have to support every use case. Uh, maybe it's enough to uh, support uh, simple uh, uh, data, plain old data in C++ terms. Thank you, Ilko.